Hey, welcome to a sort of half tour, half tutorial on how I make mental music and others, I guess. You might be interested. I got this as a request and I think I can make one. I've got a script here, that's why I'm talking quick. Just to be clear on this, I still view myself as a beginner in music, but I've got tips along the way. So don't expect me to teach you music theory, I actually don't have the slightest clue. Same can be said for composition theory, if it's even a thing. Most of what I talk about is what I've got from experience, some of it elsewhere. First thing is composition. Composition is what makes a song, at least by my definition. It's all these notes you see here. Without it there wouldn't be a song. This is applying all your knowledge of music theory and instruments into a piece of art. Like an artist with their tools, you have to do this with music. But I've got four general rules when it comes to applying to the craft and stuff, I don't know. Don't have to put that. I'll just show it. There's climax and build up. Experiment and improve. And patience. To showcase these, I'll use an original song of mine. One uh, from a series I called Avon. It's a battle theme. I call it Pocket Creatures. It's a thing in the world that I've created. It is finished. The inspiration for this was a mix of Tekken and Streets of Rage, but also the Pokemon song that I forgot to write. It was um, the theme of that uh, guy, I forgot, Sword and Shield. But that sort of came together to make this. I'll go through how I wrote this with the four roles in mind. Although this was written in two hours or something, because I was really inspired. And it came from the heart. Before I start though, I want to explain this. I write my songs in Tux Guitar and export them to MIDI for a few reasons. Tux Guitar is quick and simple and easy to use. It does everything necessary and is all in one place, so it's easy to compose. And a small tip and not a rule. Metal music usually has a percussion track with something happening consistently on each beat. So you see here there's uh, 35. These are I think kick drum. But this applies a beat to any sort of song. In metal it would usually be a uh, crash. But this isn't really that metal. Yeah I think that's all that is. So rule number one, detail. Detail is an important thing to have in a song because details stand out sometimes. For example, the famous Metallica song, Welcome Home Sanitarium. You know it has a very distinct composition in the intro alone. You can hear the harmony coming during the build up of the harmony. That's detail. Without it, it would probably sound pretty boring, honestly. I probably should have gotten a tab for it to show that. Oh. It sort of amplifies the song and you can also hear the percussion coming in that song. But in this song here, in Battle, the Pocket Creatures Battle theme, I've, I've got a sort of build up here, you can see by the empty tracks here. It serves to make what a, would be a boring song into an interesting one. Because it needs detail. I've got a different example of this, I'll show this first. So that's the build-up of that. But in my recent cover of uh, 
the East song. They pronounce it Ease, I think. It's YS, that, that game. It's a uh, Mother of Altago. So in this somewhere, uh, thus. There's like a build up, I think. Yeah, just before the chorus, there's like an interesting detail. But first, it's important to note that there's different types of detail. I think there's some that support the song and some that just add to it. The difference is quite obvious because I think support is like a rhythm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the detail of um, adding to it is just extra. It's a neat thing to have if it's there. The part I was talking about is specifically this part here. It sort of builds up here. This part. It's quite a nice detail to have. And when a song sounds empty, that's why you want to add it. Unfortunately, I disabled the lead tracks on this for some reason. So I sort of ruined it a bit. Oh well. Another aspect of the detail is variation. It, in the original of this song, this doesn't it? This part of the lead, fuck. Yeah, this part doesn't appear. This. But that's like an extra detail. It sort of helps add to it. It isn't necessary, but it can just be neat to have. Honestly, I prefer if just the piano was there. I just had it for fun. Another thing about detail is variation. It's kind of hard to pull off sometimes, it depends on the song. But I'm using Demotory Ghostly Eyes as an example. In the rhythm you can hear like how the rhythm changes a bit. Sort of adds a harmony. Yeah, this is just something without by ear. It's not that impressive. It's probably wrong actually, this part especially. It should be a 4 6. I tabbed this years ago. It's also important with uh, another detail I forgot to mention. You need to have the support for other instruments as well. So the lead here can sound quite boring. Just listening to it as it is. Sounds okay, but it's not amazing. But if we enable this, which is my octave for it, the octave being the note higher and a different instrument, it will sound a bit different. Makes it sound really interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'd like to add it in a symphonic stuff like this, especially. Actually, that's the problem with metal music and how I write it. I don't have the creativity or really patience to make it all guitars, that some metal musicians can. So I just use other instruments and it sounds better honestly. It's really hard to pull off. I know Family Jewels does it with guitars usually. Richard DB as well, I think. They're both the two most inspiring YouTube musicians at least to me. Next is build up and climax. This is kind of hard to explain. Uh, it sounds like how story structure would work, I guess. You have to build up to something epic, and that is the climax, and then it falls afterwards like to the result, or maybe a repeat or something. Something like that. I've got an example, it's here. So this part here is a build-up. 
and this is the climax. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems to me. If you start a song with just this part, it probably wouldn't really sound that great because there's no like, building, uh, what's it called? Building expectations or just hyping people up, I don't know. Big plot twist. What if I told you everything in a section is a build up and a climax? So just these, these are eight balls alone. There's got like a build, build up and a climax. So it starts off with a low note and then it goes higher. And timings are important. It's interesting how it works. And again, correct me if I'm wrong. That's all that there is to build up and climax. Experiment and improve, that's the third rule. What I mean by that is songs are sometimes hard to compose. Inspired songs like the one I'm using generally don't need much experimenting on because there's already a grounds for it. Similarly, if you make a cover, uh, it's already got a good base for a song which will lead into rule four again. With experimenting though, it's good to find a good addition for a song. For example, in that cover, just before the chorus, you'll notice the sweeping lead. That is experimentation. The original song doesn't have that detail. Again, rule one. Because I've added it, it's sort of improved on it, in a way. Because I experimented. Not only this, but the cover I haven't finished yet. It's a cover of an orchestral song, with a good melody, by the way. But I have to find a way to make it sound non-orchestrally, as a metal cover, at least. So what I did, I started leaving the, the uh, original composition as it is, in tab format. And then I added a rhythm and a bass, and a percussion, and began writing those to see how it sounded. Because if I didn't do this, I don't know how it will sound or if it will sound good at all. Because I did it, I found out it does sort of sound good. Otherwise it's just a waste of time. To improve on it, I had to make changes to the details there. I wish I could show an example, but I can do it here with the battle theme, I guess. Let's listen to this first and I'll explain the details of what I improved if I do improve them. So yeah, there's probably bits to improve on, but not everything. So I'll come back when I've done that. Alright, I'm back. I just added three changes to them. To this song. You can probably see them already. And there's some down here. Oops, that's in solo, my bad.
the main bits that I've changed is I've added a crashes here on the percussion and then I build up this part. And for the I guess lead or rhythm, I don't know what they are. Uh, the Koto at least, or the Gulls thing as it's known. I've added the this weird sort of counter harmony, but also sort of harmony. But it also is, has a different timing and it's played more. And then for the synth, which you can barely hear, that's the point. Was it be too crowded? I've changed these bits and removed a uh, bit of the harmony, or the octave I guess. So it sounds completely different. I'll isolate them so you know. Yeah, it's pretty good. We'll probably finish this song in the future, but I don't really care for now. It's an original composition anyway, and I've got so many covers to go through. The last rule is patience, and this should be obvious anyway. I find covers and originals quite easy to give up on sometimes. Especially if you don't have much knowledge on music theory. But I've found with enough time and dedication you can make a good song. Not all the time, I've definitely made bad songs that have taken weeks. If it's taking you days to make a simple melody, just stop. That's mainly for original composition. Some of my best tips to stop the music equivalent of writer's block is, is the following. Start from another point of the song, but whether you're trying to make a chorus or finish a verse, Try stopping somewhere else instead, like the outro or the intro, or the solo, for the matter. Try to think of it like this. I like to think transitions or changing sections as a baton pass. You're carrying the momentum of the other riff to the next. And you can see this in this cover again. So how it goes from the verse to the chorus. Next thing is uh, finding a template. What I mean by template is base your song around another. This is like that I got from a, a jazz musician called Insane in the Rain Music. Check him out by the way, he makes amazing music. I don't think he's on YouTube anymore because of uh, how shit YouTube is. But uh, he uses a thing called templates and I think what I got from that was you use another song as a template, like say you want to make a song that sounds like a Metallica cover. Well hell, maybe Galnerius, the, uh, the one who did that Hunter x Hunter outro. You could base it off that and it'll sound great. Whether it's the composition style or the technique. Or you can make a hybrid. You can make it Galnerius mutes. I don't know, Metallica? But what about uh, Meshuggah? <laughs> God, that sounds wacky. I'll show you a few examples of the template though. So the first example is the the One Why songs, which is a, a cover. This one, Dr. Wiley's Castle. I used a template for this and it's quite an interesting one because it's a really underrated cover. Ironically the template I thought is from another cover. So that really bad intro is from this song. So it's inspired by this part. And that's quite interesting. It's taken different mechanics from it. And it implemented it into my own cover. Or my song Apex, which was inspired by a DM Decoru cover, cover, no, song.
The song is amazing by the way. You should definitely check out this artist stuff on the the Calamity mod. This was Terraria I think. I haven't played it so I don't know. But I like the soundtrack anyway. And there's of course this which is a blatant inspiration of animals as leaders. They're amazing. Sometimes just having a style or finding one that you like and copying it can help. I tried to make my song sound like Demitory, as you probably heard earlier in that uh, tab I made. But it doesn't sound exactly like it, which is the problem. But it helps at least give you an idea and can make a style of your own actually. I think mine's a weird hybrid of Demitory Nobu Yuimatsu the Final Fantasy composer, and a bit of Falcom sound team. But the other way to get it is uh, this next thing, to get inspired. You have to find an inspiration for the song that you're making. For example, this one was uh, the Sword and Shield, as I mentioned. Actually, I'll find that track quick. This is it, the Spike theme. Interesting fact about this song, actually. In the game, when you progress forward in the stage, the environment I meant. It'll, it'll add the instruments as it goes along, so if you go backwards it'll remove the instruments. I found that detail really interesting. Definitely here's the inspiration there. Another thing to another tip to keep note of. Get into the rhythm of repeating the song into your head. The original song that is. Or if you can you can try to repeat the cover in your head. This way you can find ways to make it better and it can help your writing skills a bit. I sometimes repeat solos in my head of songs I've covered to make sure they're good and if I can improve on them. On top of that, when I can't find a way to write a rhythm for a song with a lead, I can use this to find a way. Because you can sort of imagine what it would sound like together. But that's all the uh, tips that I have and all the rules. So I've just exported this into a MIDI and I'm going to put in FL Studio. This is just a weird way I make music. Now I've just imported it. Might be wondering why this is here. When I begin to make the songs sound like actual songs, sort of, I like to write down the things that I have to do for it as a routine. So I've already done it for a, another cover as you can see here. Still finishing it as I speak. I've got things to do on it like a fixy guitar solo. Drums need to be fixed and have better crashes and such, a better snare verbal, snare volume. Other leads need a maybe a fret position. I'll be explaining these in the thingy, but if it doesn't sound good, I have to change that. That's another important thing. Another thing I like to do in this when I start these is uh, I put the song track on there because I'll be listening to the song and not the pattern. The request that I got, which is important to note, was actually for how to make metal music in FL Studio. And just to make this clear, I can't really play guitars that well. I've tried and it sounds awful. 
It's even worse in Apple Studio because of the weird delay bug with the audio interface. And yes, I used a real audio interface for a while, but that had its own delay issue as well. So it's not worth doing, in my opinion. You're better off using another digital audio workstation. I just use VSDs because it's convenient and I can actually make them sound good, sort of. So of course if I'm not uh, making music without a real instrument, if I'm making one without it, I have to use VSTs instead. Virtual stringed instruments or something, I forgot what it stands for. I have a bunch of folders for where to scan them and it adds all this stuff to it. I favourite the ones I use most often, and I don't really use that many actually. I've got them into the routine of using good ones. Yeah, there's a strange bug in FL Studio when you import MIDI's where it adds this to it. This first track, it's really weird. I just delete it right away. There's some interesting tricks in FL Studio as well, with a mouse and keyboard. Things that I've picked up, I'll show you some of them quick. Pressing the scroll wheel on these things will actually make it, uh, it'll just make it go to a uh, specific track in the master. As you can see below though, it does that. If you hold shift and left click, it will bring up this and it will allow you to name it, give an icon and colour it. It's pretty convenient. Also you can shift these by holding shift. It will move the entire thing. And it will also move everything above as well. It's really handy to have. Sometimes in songs I use the panning tool here. Make it go left or right. Yeah, I think that's everything to the interface other than more complex things. Usually what I'd like to do next is I put the instruments in. The instruments that I use. So I've got perfect drums here. The kit I use is actually a preset I have made that sounds like a depository. So it's not exact, but uh, it's good enough. I like it anyway. There's probably better tones to use for drums to make it sound heavier. It's just what I use because I don't know enough about drums. Believe it or not, this was the last thing I learned in composition. I don't know why, because it's so fundamental. It, it's so easy to compose. So if you do need to learn, I recommend this video by 8-Bit -Bit Music Theory. How to write drums for non drummers. Impenetrable. This one really helped me learn how to make drums. Really interesting. I'm going to insert the rest of the instruments. i do a direct wave for this because, uh, oh, and I can show you how to use this as well. It's because, uh, I don't have any good clean guitar. VSTs at home, and this is the only good one. So I'll just load that there, but with Direct Wave it lo loads to the uh, the mini channel, what it's called. Basically these things, it's colour coded. And if you click on them it also shows what colour it is, because sometimes it's hard to tell. This says 1, so I have to program it to 1 if it says 16. It has to be programmed to 16. You do it with the arrows up here. It's basically putting two and two together or something, whatever the term is. 
becoming one. And that will give it the uh, audio channel that it needs, as well as the library. All my sounds I think are from DSK sound vaults. It's really interesting how it works. So I've noticed that um, it's missing notes, and this is why. MIDI channel. It's on number 2 as well. Very easy fix, just press 2 on there, go to 2 even, and double click the acoustic star, and that's done. And then I'll do the same for the Gulls Hang. I have to check the MIDI channel first. 3 and 4. starting to come along now. This is where the part of the video is going to get long. Well, this is the guitars, I believe. I use heavier 7 strings and uh, this is the best metal guitar in my opinion. I try to use uh, other ones. Shreddage is usable. It's not perfect and the tones suck for it. I use heavier 7 strings because of the tones and the other elements of this. And I tend to use a pre made pattern or a effect thing that I use. With patterns, you just want to find one that you like. I use Giant Monster and uh, I forgot the other one. Engine something? I forgot the name of the other one. Space Marine, that's that. Those are the two that I use for rhythms. But I do have my own presets. Also when you're using this you need to click some stuff. Make sure this is drop A. Make sure this is on auto. Though you can change it later on and I'll show you that. I'll only be doing the beginning of the song, just FYI. Otherwise it will get too long. Then I click play octave, simple chord, legato mode and unison bend. These all can be used but I don't use them because it, uh, it sounds awful, I'll show you what I mean. They just changed it in some, some different ways. So you see it out and out when octaves are enabled. I also disable sustain pedal because that just sustains notes and it can be buggy sometimes. Velocity mute enables uh, palm mutes which are the metal e part sounds. And I have to click doubling because that's important. Also make sure the string control is automatic and down picking is on or you can have it off if you want. I insert my instruments first because it's just easier. What was this part? Yeah, that's the bass. Interesting thing about this, Contacts is a, another library. It has a, its own plugins built within it, which is weird. So this is by Native Instruments. And uh, there's a bunch of good BSTs in there. These are the ones I use. 
Don't get the Jupiter, by the way. Get the Hydra. The, the Hydra just sounds better than the Jupiter. I don't know why I got Jupiter. I'll use Abyss for the base. When using this, you have to go to this eye in the corner and click MIDI channel Omni, and this will allow you to hear the song. Also, enable multi tracking, disable anti repetition. Go to strumming and disable strum and play input. Don't want hand reset, disable popping. And that's all we need for the bass. Other than the tone, I'll show the tone after. Sounds very naked so far. So I'm going to add the tone. There's different presets in Guitar Rig, and some of them are good, some bad. I made my own bass to sort of make it sound better. It sounds awful, but uh, there's a reason why. That sounds better. There's this weird issue with the Abyss bass for some reason. It thinks that the top velocity here is a slap or a pop. Which is a very bizarre design choice, because I think it should be up here, personally. But the lower it goes, the more natural it sounds, like a finger stall. And yes, I have played bass, and I do play it. So it does sound vastly different, depending on where you put the velocity. I'll show it with guitars quick. The uh, palm mutes are done by lowering the velocity on different VSTs at different places. I'll do it like that. You have to make sure that the these are extended. Otherwise it won't uh, play at all. Oh, I've enabled sound by accident. Oh, no, I haven't. What's wrong with it then? You do run into bugs like this sometimes. I think it's because it's not in the uh, part of a chord or something. Could be mistaken. I find it easier to just replace the notes. Interesting tip with that is uh, the last note you've clicked will be the next note you place, as in the length and the velocity. So if I click this part, it will now place a B of the same size. Or not a B, just wherever you place it. Holding down the mouse too will uh, delete things if you want. Holding control will give you a highlight option. I think that's it, but if you're having issues with the piano roll, go to the top and there'll be different settings, mess around with them. These are just what I have. If you wanted to uh, deal with the piano roll on a line or a cell, you could do that. I think that's it for the room, though. that's all I have for it really, other than if you use a whammy ball. I have to show the parameters after. Parameters are an advanced thing. So that's the first guitar, I think. Let me double check. 
Yeah. I'll have to show you this part as well. I usually go for the same tones because uh, I can't be bothered. And I have to edit this again. It keeps doing this for some reason, I've no idea how to stop it. On the guitars as well, I like to adjust the reverb a bit to give it a little more depth. Actually, I could show the parameters briefly. To explain what this is, you just go to the row at the top left. Browse parameters. This is how you make all the little minor adjustments, like fret position. So if I wanted to play the song like here, for example, I can do that in parameters by making an alternation. I'll show that quick. It sounds vastly different when you move the fret position because of the string intonation, I think it's called. This is the difference between playing an open string there and a fifth fret up here. The open string has a bit more width in how it sounds, that's why you hear some really good clean chorus sounds in some songs, and mine. So on the left it shows the parameters. I'd like to right click and create automation clip. There's probably a different way to do this, but this is what I do. So to get in the right position it's kind of annoying but you have to go here again and click detached. This way it keeps it on the screen when you're clicking elsewhere. So let's say I wanted to put it up to the 9th fret or the 10th fret. But it won't let me out because it's automated. To fix that I have to click on the dots here and drag them. And you'll see it changed. Let's throw a curveball in there. Let's say I wanted to go back down to the fifth fret at some point. I could do that as well. All I have to do is go into the automation here and right click. And then you can right click again on another point and it'll lower that one. So it just adds points. If you want to delete it, you just right click on the dot. And if you wanted to curve the automation, you can just click the middle dot here. Not sure why you would. With slides it's hard to explain, but uh, you can do them. They just don't sound good in this, and it's quite unnecessary at this point. That isn't the only thing you can change with, change with uh, parameters. You can also do string control. So let's say I wanted to sweep it on the, I don't know, first three strings. The E, B and G string. So I don't get this top bit playing, although well, it's not recommended actually. This is just an example. So I'll just pull it up again. And then it will try to keep notes to the top there, as you can see. It's not recommended, but there are rare cases like tapping or guitar solos. Or maybe you're trying to play through the fire and flames on heavier seven strings, which you definitely can do. This I know is the harmony for the lead. Same thing, but I don't need to add reverb unless it will add an extra detail, hence experimenting and improvement. But what I like to do with this is I like to lower the volume so it's not too invasive.
That's all the leads done, I think. Next to the synths. No, it depends on what the song is. I like to use Nucleus Orchestra to make the synths. And there's nothing really special about them exactly. I could give a brief rundown of the interface. I sometimes use Direct Wave and Flex to make synths, which are more futuristic. And you can apply other things to it, like um, parameters. You could still do parameters with uh, this and create automations. Automations are how you automate things in it, so it changes. I don't know of any other effective way other than on a piano roll in some instruments you can make it so that a key change or whatever it's called will do this. So you see it says here C1 and C sharp 1. It will change the type of thing it is based on where the note appears. I'll try to do that quickly. Show it. This is a sustained version of the synth. Also important note, I screwed up the importing of a MIDI. In Tux Guitar you want to make sure everything is 100% volume and panned to the middle. Otherwise it will export the panning and volume with it and it creates this weird problem where it's like that even though even though it's on one side already. So it's still left even though it's middle. Also a quick tip for FL Studio users, on the top left you can see the percentage, you can use this for panning and volume, automations you can use it for, you can even do it for pitch which I need to show again because I forgot to show that. It basically shows you how far everything is, so it goes on 34%, 50% right, that's just how you adjust it in a smaller way. Going back to the lead again because I've got to show this. Down here are the channels. These things are useful sometimes but it's only the pitch and volume you need to worry about. Velocity not volume. The pitch will change how it sounds, so for example I can add a bend somewhere, let's do this quick here. So I want to bend that D5 to a music fairy, music fairy type, <laughs> fuck it. Ah, oh, shield that now. No, it goes to E. So I want to bend that to an E, so how do I do that? I either left click or right click on this. Left, left clicking will uh, do this, it will make it more blocky and right click will make it more sort of like this, more free and I can get really weird stuff out of this and if I wanted to I could make it a whammy thing, I'll show that as well the tremolo bar I don't know why they call it whammy bar I forgot to show this as well I like to put the ranges down here to 12 because it's easier to edit and it's less annoying because you'll go back and forth between the instruments and it will change the size of this, like watch this it's really zoomed out as I clicked in the corner here and dragged now it's back and zoomed in again it's an annoying bug, I wish they fixed it but anyway to make this a bend you just make sure the beginning is flat, otherwise if you don't make it flat it will just sound like a pre-bend. Then on the top there if you can see it where it says cents, every 100 cents is a another note. And in between is of course the uh, frequency change thing. I don't know, it's too complicated.
So that's how you do a bend. If you want to do a whammy bar, it's just you have to drag it out longer. It'll sound weird, but it sounds cool sometimes. Yeah, and be careful of that. It sometimes adjusts the other bars for some reason, the cells even. I don't know why it does that, it's so annoying. Alright, back to the synth. It's wrong synth, my bad. <laughs> Good job, me. So here we have that volume problem. Now just in case you're like deep into progress and there's only one instrument or two that has that problem, go to the rack here and add it at the parametric EQ. Then go to the, the top right here and drag that up. Not too far because it will uh, make it sound awful, too loud. Alternatively, you could go into the VST, which I do recommend actually over this. I forgot about that. On the top right here, it, there's a slider. This is just volume. You can also adjust panning, but I don't recommend that because it's uh, really an aftertouch thing. That's another thing. Aftertouch versus before. I don't know what you call that. Bass, I guess. The bass things are the key things to a song, the key instruments, so they're not the effects you're applying afterwards, whereas volume and reverb might be. So usually you don't want to put reverb in the actual VST itself, because it takes a while to get back to it. Depends on the VST, though. But if you want to edit it after and do it more easily, just do it afterwards. So instead of something like this, you can just uh, make it a rack in the parametric EQ. What I'm trying to say is you could just edit it somewhere else and it'll be more convenient. So let's say I wanted to change that to make it uh, sound like this instead. Let's say I only wanted that for this section. Um, now I have to change this as well. So I'll drag these along to make it smaller, because I only need that for that, for the spiccato. Of course it sounds empty, and this is what I mean by improve and experiment. So I'll highlight it and press Ctrl C to copy and then Ctrl V to paste. It still sounds empty despite that, and I think I'm going to change it a bit. I'll add a note here, a note here, see what it sounds like again, experimenting. Because of the speed of the song, it doesn't sound great. Small tip with heavier stepping strings again. Uh, if you go to velocity and you put it to the top, or at least above this part, it will do a pinch harmonic and be a volume warning. Sounds weird. To explain what I've done here, so I've just added random notes to make it sound better. Last tip for guitars, I think. You have to be wary of the tones that you use, because sometimes they sound absolute crap. 
I'll show an example. So this is the one I currently use, which is my own. And this is a pre-made one. Doesn't sound awful, but it's uh, not very clear. Which is a problem with a lot of metal tones that I have. And it resets it again for some reason. All these settings here. With the synth I've made a few adjustments here. Sounds crap, but this isn't just an example. But we have this problem still. You just place this uh, as a spiccato. Change that, you just place a note where the thing is, where it says C1 or C sharp 1. So C sharp 1 is a spiccato, so I want C1 for this today. So, so that changed that. Placing C sharp on there will change it to spiccato. I believe that's everything I've got to show. So this is what it sounds like in the full. It's not finished, not perfect either. It's just a rough look at what I've done. I don't need to do any volume control because it, it just sounds passive to me. To label this, I forgot to show one last thing, and uh, this is important as well. You may have noticed that the crashes don't appear, that's because Toxical has a weird system where it puts left and right crashes on uh, similar notes, but the notes don't transport to this for some reason. I can't quite explain it. So to change that I'll usually just go through the piano roll here and then place a note where it sounds like a crash or something that will sustain. Yeah, sounds good. Saved, Pog. There's also a weird bug of the toms here, I think that's what they're called. If one of them doesn't work. There's like one missing or something. I don't know where it is. It's gone for some reason. There's one that doesn't work for some reason. No idea what it's about, why it happens. It's annoying. So these are sort of like edits I'd make when listening to it, because I've noticed it and I'll write it down on the sticky note. Also a tip that I got from another musician, I've got the name, is to make the notes less robotic and you can highlight the piano roll to edit the notes that are most stand out. So you can just do this and it'll make everything sound a little different, like a human's playing it.
I don't notice the bass and the bass was actually too loud. <laughs> oh, the fuck it already. Um, that's everything, I think. There's nothing else to really talk about, to my knowledge. I can ask questions about it, answer them even. Yeah, so that's my music making process, and I'll show you a finished product now. So this is the East song again. This is just everything I've done to it. I'll go through it as it plays. It's not as much work, believe it or not, as uh, other musicians who use FL Studio. I'll just use it because it's friendly enough. It's got a big community behind it at least. Except the forums are fucking invisible unless you log in. These pictures here are just to simulate a slide down or slide out or slide in. It's just a trick I use that sometimes works. It has a low success rate in the heavier 7 strings. Because I don't have a dedicated one for some reason. It's quite annoying. Let's key change. So yeah, that's everything I think. It isn't too technical. I try to keep it as limited as possible because it is. It can be technical. There's quite a bit of. I forgot to say these things. You can cut the bits off to make specific sections, and when you place them somewhere, it will keep the same thing. So this is probably the twelfth fret or something. And if I place it somewhere here, it will put this these notes on the twelfth fret. Just some interesting things. Maybe you'll learn something from this. I don't know. That's everything. Bye. Something I forgot to show you was uh, key changing. Uh, this is actually quite simple. I just copy and paste the riff that's already there in the tab, that is. And when I'm going to key change it, I'm going to go to FL Studio and highlight the part that I'm changing. So I hold shift on the top there, drag it, and then I drag this up or down wherever I want it to go. Experiment and improve. It's one of the things I do. I 
I'm pressing shift on the top there highlights it again. Don't do it for drums because uh, it's a percussion track. There's nothing to change there because it's not pitch related. It sounds pretty good. I'm going to export that, it's pretty good. A little behind the scenes of my folders, huh? 